Thank you. Troy, New York, uh, you're on the Washington Journal. Go ahead. I, I would just like to thank you for taking my call, number one. And number two, you should go fuck yourself. On the uh, USA Today, Anne Arundel County, Maryland, Republican, you're on the air. Hey, hey what's going on? How you doing? Hey, good. I just, uh, I just want to talk about the uh, illegal immigrants. Go ahead. Um, well, I'm the, I, uh, one of the managers up at McDonald's up in Anne Arundel. And even though, I mean, they are illegal and all, I mean, they just do really good work because they're determined to try to get their lives together in America. So as a McDonald's manager, you hire illegal immigrants? Uh, I mean, like, accidentally. And how, how, do, you, how do you do it accidentally? <laughs> Elk Grove, California. I think our leg was being pulled there. Go ahead, Elk Grove. Hi, good morning. Hi. Hey, just wanted to make a comment, um, you know, about this is the first time in any election that, uh, you know, I voted uh, Democrat, and that's because, you know, all of the one-way street that the Republican Party seemed to be going, it sounded an awful lot like Howard Stern's butthole. All right, we're going to clear the lines and uh, we'll uh, continue. From uh, Rhode Island and the town is Quahog, you're on. Go ahead. Hi, I actually uh, disagree with a couple of the people who just called in. I was actually in Iraq no more than maybe three or four months ago. And, um, everyone there wants to leave. We don't want to be there anymore. We don't want to keep fighting. We just want to go home. We've been there for too long. We keep getting held over and held over. We haven't seen our family in years. I mean, I can't remember the last time I barrel rolled my wife. Uh, next telephone call, Fayetteville, Tennessee. Go ahead. He's on at least for second, if not, of course, for first. Let's go to Clarence, Democratic line in Jacksonville, Florida, and hear what he has to say. Hi, Clarence. Hi, good morning. Good morning. It's a very uh, exciting day here in America, the New Hampshire primary. Uh, I think it's very interesting to see how many, how different this race is from previous races. When you look at the amount of personality that you see in the Republican field, Herman Cain with his 999 plan, Rick Perry with his oops, Michelle Bachman with her very hairy vagina. Oh, excuse me, that was totally inappropriate. And uh, we're talking about the candidates and what's going on in New Hampshire. Let's hear from Robin, who's a Republican in West Point, Nebraska. Good morning. Peace with us. Okay, Mary, you're up. Hi. This is Mary. I have a big cock. I like to play with Oh, oh, oh. I don't know how Mary got through our uh, Tanya, our screeners. Yes, Tanya. All right. Spokane, Washington, Republican, you're on the air. Hi, thank you for C-SPAN. Uh, I think he makes a good point. Um, are we going to start prosecuting every limo driver around? I mean, I think America and its overzealousness uh, to get revenge for 9-11 is starting to go after everyone we can. The, uh, the spokesman review out here in Washington, uh, they printed a great article. It was written by Gladwin D'Souza, and uh, he put it quite eloquently when he said, uh... Next call, Newark, Ohio. Uh, another Republican call from Dusty, Washington. Hello? Hi. Hi, I'm on the air. You are on the air. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on a cell phone. I must be from the Stone Age here. <laughs> uh, let's go next to Lakeland, Florida, on our line for your call. Richland, Washington, on our line for Republicans. Good morning and welcome. Hi, uh, I'd kind of like to touch on a, a few points that your first caller made. Uh, primarily, I have a really big penis. I can suck my... Next up is San Diego, California, on our line for independence. Welcome. Yes, good morning. Circumstances as they change. Quite Michigan. Jim, on our Republican line, please go ahead with your question or comment. Yeah, you know, uh, thank you, C-SPAN. And Peter, uh, you mentioned something about uh, sharing the burden. And I just want to say, you know, I go home every night, turn on the news, see these congressmen and women getting out of their limousines with their law degrees. But, you know, for me, you know, on Main Street, I'm, uh, I'm still getting a $9 haircut. And, uh, you know, I drive a pretty nice van. And for that, I'm fortunate. But what I hate is that I'm becoming the one with the draconian policies. I'm becoming the vilified. I, you know, I manage a Quiznos. And uh, these punk kids come in, and uh, you know they expect a free bag of chips, as our deal used to be. But you know times have changed, and I got to say, you want those Doritos? Well, cool fucking ranch kid. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Republican in Tacoma, Washington. Hello, thank you. Now listen, I just want to step outside the courtroom for a second and discuss the current technological landscape in a slightly different light. Um, these detriments um, and what the government's doing with the technological landscape is certainly bad, but I want to argue here that the benefits outweigh the costs in this current landscape. 
first of all, there's just the convenience factor alone. I mean, you want an up-to-date market report, keep tabs on stocks during the day, sign up for PayPal. You want the Guinness Book of World Records for biggest beach party? Ask Jeeves. And that's just convenience alone. I think uh, this Jim. is also a time when there's a private solution to a lot of the privacy concerns that you bring up, Aaron. I think this is a really disruptive new bunch we have on Silicon Valley. I mean, did you know that Facebook was developed in a dorm room by two naked chicks? All right. Clarence, an independent in uh, Washington. Washington, D.C. area. You can read more in the New York Times as well and a front page story in the Washington Post. Rob is joining us from Brooklyn, New York, Republican Line. Good morning. Second Amendment versus local laws. What's your take? You know, I'm from Brooklyn. I read the New York Times. And to tell you the truth, Ani, you look pretty nervous. And I just want to know at this point, what's your stand on the movie Cool Jacob is joining us uh, up early in Alaska. Let's go to another New Hampshire call. Uh, Dan joins us, Republicans line. Uh, good morning, Dan. Where are you calling from? Hi, good morning. I'm calling from Portsmouth. And Great, welcome. I used to, good morning. I used to be a, an assistant to the Portsmouth city manager, and part of my job would be to uh, to help prepare for the primary, so I know a little bit of what Chairman McDonald's going through, uh, a very little bit. I know you have a big job today, sir. Uh, and my question is regards to how turnout will affect the eventual result, and that is for Mr. Chairman, do you believe that Mitt Romney has a big penis? Oops. I apologize, Chairman McDonald that comment. Uh, we're trying to keep the conversation okay. productive here this morning. Uh, I wanted to make sure I heard him right. This call is Bedford, New Hampshire. Jim, good morning. Hi, good morning. Hi. I was at an event in uh, the John Huntsman campaign yesterday. I, I was a little bit confused why somebody like Huntsman hasn't been getting nearly as much attention as some of the upper tier candidates. And at one point during the event, he pulled out his pants and exposed his penis. Uh, Chantelle, Virginia. In Washington, you're next. Good morning. Hello, am I there? Yes. Good morning, caller. Can't help but see that I, I thought I saw this coming. Judging from Putin's reaction, he uh, recently stashed missiles in Cuba. My my grandfather, I remember him watching this. He's a he is a Ukrainian, and uh, he made a comment to me, which was. Okay, we're going to go on to uh, Gross Point, Michigan. Good morning to you, please. Call us from Moscow, uh, Idaho. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you for C SPAN. Uh, normally, I'm quite skeptical of the mainstream media, but I, there is substantial evidence at the current time that the mainstream media, that is Fox News and CNN, are suppressing the actual casualty rates in, during this um, battle war, whatever you want to call it. I was watching this last night, and while mm -hmm. CNN and Fox both had placed the casualties around the low hundreds, the independent media journalists who were actually on the ground in this battlefield had to... <laughs> Okay, we're going to go on. We've had a couple of uh, safer, uh, and, and uh, uh, both to humans, the environment, uh, and, and to the economy. We have about 15 minutes left with our guests. Let's get back to those calls. Baltimore, thank you for waiting. Tom, Republican. I'm pronounced Thom. Thom? Yes. Go ahead, sir. Just, you know, watching the program today, getting riled up, I sort of had a eureka moment. This entire country is uncircumcised. Let's go right on to Weirton, West Virginia. Marianne, first caller this morning for Judd Gregg. Go ahead. Well, hello, Governor Gregg. First, I'd like to say that you were my governor and congressman and senator for some time, and we were pulling for you to run for president yourself. But your support of Mitt oh, Romney and nice support of Mitt you. Romney as well. And, of course, the, uh, Mitt Romney has very high expectations uh, for the campaign and for his victory in the New Hampshire primary. I was wondering, what size lead do you think he needs to avoid a disappointment and also, how big is Mitt Romney's penis? <sighs> Charlotte, North... Uh, apologies, uh, Governor. Charlotte, North Carolina, Marcus. Uh, more calls. Normal, Michigan. Uh, Reagan on our Democrats' line. Go ahead. Hi, Pedro. Uh, thanks. And just on a side note, an old college buddy of yours says hello, my coworker. Um, but anyway, on to the topic. Um, just tell the truth. Um, I don't think we've been bipartisan enough today. I think the main issue is um, that people are wasting water. I mean, they're not there's fluoride in it. People are wasting it. You know, I came across an article on the cover of Tiger Beat the other week. Obama sings, you know, 12 songs in the shower. And Topeka, Kansas. Uh, hello. Yeah, before I have my comment, I'm enjoying the discussion very much. I've been listening to C-SPAN for several years and probably the last few days have had the highest amount of obscene callers, so I'd like to ask a procedural question. What is C-SPAN doing to crack down on these calls? 
Well, whenever uh, we hear something, uh, first of all, we, 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 we try to admonish, we try to cut them off as best we uh, can. Uh, we're not on any kind of delay or anything, so we, we, we just have to do the best we can and hope that we're getting the best from our callers. It's pretty much what I can say. Yeah, it's just a shame that the level of discussion has gone down, but about the Romney situation, <laughs> I actually think the attacks are the best thing that could happen for Romney the best type of attacks that could happen whatsoever for Romney because they highlight his business experience. You go to the exit polls in New Hampshire, <clears> you see what they're voting for him for. They're voting for him because they care about the economy, because they care about winning the election, and they're voting for him because of his huge penis. All right, let's uh, call her um, messing with us this morning. We hope to get the best of our callers. He uh, set himself up nicely there, but let's, uh, let's uh, move on. Um, we don't need that kind of stuff on the program. Next up is Rantoul, Illinois. Good morning. Good morning, guys. How are you doing? Um, first, I would just like to say that, you know, thank you to the bat right there for just, with all the persecution and all the stuff that's been going on, and you guys have not been getting a lot of fan service as far as things go, and I just really want to thank you for sticking through it and keep doing your job and, you know, keep doing what you do, um, despite, you know, a lot of uh, people really not liking it. And as far as that goes, I would really just like to, give you a nice big fuck. McLean, Virginia, you're <laughs>